I want to acknowledge that all of this stuff you guys are using didn't happen because of me. It happened because of a tremendously dedicated team of students. A lot of students have worked on this, so uh, I don't want to take credit for all their hard work, but uh, we're pretty proud of the resources that we've built. And it's been a long, uh, long journey to get all this stuff to this point. So when you um, hit our website, uh, in the downloads directory, and you've seen a lot of URLs, but when you hit the website with the downloads directory, you're going to see a list of um, directories, something like this. And the window I'm showing on the left is actually what you see from the rsync server, which I'll work from today. But there's a parallel structure between what's on the rsync server and what's on the open website. So if you want to sort of browse the data from your browser, just go to the uh, website and uh, you can sort of look through the data. So I'll dismiss that and let's talk a little bit about the data itself. Um, all of the databases, we distribute a bunch of databases that have been built from um, the TUH database. So the TUH database is right here and you won't be interacting with that directly, but all of our databases are linked to that database. And that's why when you use commands like rsync, you have to use the follow the links option to uh, minus capital L because you have to make sure that you pick up the actual data and that won't happen unless you uh, tell rsync to follow links. So uh, many of you have rsynced from this TUHEEG seizure directory. We've been releasing this data uh, for about uh, five or six years now and we're up to um, v1.5.1. And in that directory, you'll see um, some instructions, a README, uh, some instructions, which will help you understand what's there. But there's essentially two important directories. One is the docs directory, and one is the EDF directory. The docs directory has some documents that hopefully uh, will educate you about the data. And um, we've got a, a series of four um, PDF files that tell you a little bit about different aspects of the data. Um, I recently released this um, 04 file that goes into the data in, in a much more detail and we'll talk a little bit about that today. However, the most important things in this docs directory are these two files, ref underscore deb and ref underscore train. Ref underscore train are the annotations for They're the annotations for the training data and they contain um, and the base file name. This is how we identify which file in the list you're uh, giving us information for. They contain the start time of an event, the stop time of an event, the type of event and a confidence or probability. Now the the, re the reference annotations that we provide have background and seizure annotated. So you'll notice some of the events have labels of seizures and some have background. Um, so if you want to look at the way the data has been annotated, you can look at it this way. And the scoring software uh, reads these things. But what you'll provide as hypotheses um, are just the seizure events. You don't need to worry about the background. Anything that you don't label as seizure, we consider labeled as background. And to make things easy, we're having you only provide the label, uh, start time, stop time, and a probability, optional probability. Um, you don't need to provide the seizure label. And I'll show you an example of this in a moment. Uh, but we tried to make it easy for people. So all you're really going to provide us is a file label, a start time, a stop time, and a probability. And that will be for each event that you detect as a seizure. There can be multiple seizure events in a file and uh, there can be no seizure events in a file. So those two files are important because those are essentially the annotations of the data. And you'll need those for training 
you'll need those for um, evaluation. Um, the data itself is in this directory called EDF. This, alter, this other directory feats, um, this is a feature file directory. I won't really talk about those today, but these are some features that we actually use in our research. And I've explained those in um, separate messages. Uh, if you're, you're more than welcome to use those if you like, um, but I'm assuming everybody's gonna wanna do their own thing when it comes to features and uh, processing the data and such. So in this EDF directory, there are two directories, dev and train. Um, sometime towards the end of the month, a third directory will appear called eval. We'll notify you and you'll rerun your rsync and you'll pick up the eval data. And uh, for the eval data, you'll then return us your hypothesis file. And that's what we'll do use to score you during the, for the competition. Um, under the train data, um, on the data itself is organized with um, by the electrode configuration. In um, the in that um, 04 file, I've explained a little bit about what these electrode configurations are. I'll show you an example in a moment. And then there's just a number to sort of split the data up, a three three uh, digit number. Um, then there's a anonymized patient ID. And then there are session files. And within the session files, there are links to an EDF file, links to a text file, and some label files. You don't have to worry about these. These are the actual labels that we develop when we manually annotate the data. Um, if you want to know more about those, we can talk offline. But I wanted to um, show you the EDF file. Um, the EDF files, if you're not familiar with that format, it's a pretty widely used format for EEG data. And the nice thing about the format is it's the header is ASCII. So you can actually directly look at the file and see what's in the file. And as you can see in the file, there are a bunch of things. The most important thing that you have to pay attention to are these channel labels. So I'm going to run a, um, a little program we have that, that dumps the header in a more user-friendly format. I could just spell properly today. And um, this sort of parses the header and, and prints out a bunch of things that are important to the header, including the channel labels. And I've been writing quite a bit about, this is one of the things that makes the data a little bit tricky, is you have these channel labels. The cha and you must pay attention to the channel labels if you want to read the data correctly. So we've provided um, so a tool as a sort of a demo of one the way that we like to read these files, NEDC PyStream. But one way or the other, you have to decode these labels and make sure that you're processing the, um, the proper channels. And I'll come back to that um, in a moment. The data itself is stored as 16-bit um, integer data. So you, you actually have to read to decode an EDF file, there's a bunch of things you have to read, including things like the minimum signal values, maximum signal values, and to norm renormalize the data and things like that. Most of the packages we've pointed people to do this decoding for you, but you, one way or the other, you have to um, apply these scale factors to the data um, to get the right values. The text file, um, is an EEG report. It's been anonymized and it contains, a, a, it's a standard EEG report that the neurologists develop when they see a, treat a patient. So it has a little bit about medical history and things like that. Uh, we probably won't be using these much in this competition, 
But if you're interested in a particular file, why it looks the way it does, or what the conditions were to produce that file, um, you can look at these uh, text files and you can see the, the uh, patient's report and perhaps that can give you some insight into the uh, problem or in, into that particular subject. So there's the, the dev set and there's the training set. Um, you're free to use these any way with, you like. When you actually prepare to run the eval set, if you want to train on both the training set and the dev set, that's perfectly acceptable. We provide the dev set just so that you have a, a test set that you can work on, which sort of guarantees you that the results you see on the dev set should be relatively close to what you see on the eval set. The, the two sets, we designed them to be very similar so that um, you, you, there's no sort of no surprises in the eval set. But um, normally what we do is we train on the training set and then we evaluate on the dev set and we kind of tune our system that way. And if you do that right, hopefully your results will generalize well to the eval set. Um, the thing you have to be a little bit careful about if you're doing machine learning on this data only about 7% of the data has seizure events. So if you train a very basic machine learning system on this data, the system more than likely is going to learn to always guess background. This is one of the interesting little problems you run into in machine learning. Um, if you just sort of train an out of the box system Maybe you picked it up some from one of the um, GitHubs or something, and you train on all the training data. Since there's so much background data and the data is so difficult, don't be surprised if your deep learning system uh, learns to always guess background. So you may want to explore initially training your system with a balanced set of seizure events and and um, background events, because uh, there's you have to kind of bootstrap the system up before you can get it to run on all of the training data because a large chunk of the training data is really just background signal. So once you generate your um, hypothesis files, you can then run the scoring software. And uh, we've provided that as a separate distribution, um, V3.3.1. And we've provided a couple examples with that software so that you can actually run the software and make sure that it's doing the right thing on your machine. So um, here we have a couple um, example files. This is in the scoring software distribution. Um, the reference file is, as before, has the base name, start time, stop time, label, and the probability and the reference file um, covers background and seizure events. The hype file, however, um, only has um, seizure events in it. It has base name, start time, stop time, and a probability. So this is what you're essentially going to deliver at the end of this competition. You're going to deliver a file like this for the evaluation set. The size of the evaluation set is about the same as the dev set. So if you wanna uh, prepare processing resources, you can use the dev set as a guide on how long it's gonna take to process the data. Um, it's fairly easy to run the scoring script. It's located in a scripts directory. You give it the reference file, you give it the hypothesis file, and it runs and it generates a directory uh, in a second called output. And in the output directory, we have a summary file that just has your results um, using all the different metrics we discuss in our paper. And then there are also results for the individual scoring metrics. And these contain file by file results. So if you want to look at what files are actually causing most of your errors and causing you problems, you can scan this file 
and you can see the file by file results. So that's um, the scoring software. We discuss the data itself and the scoring software. And then, the, you know, the rest is really your particular um, deep learning system and how you're going to deal with the data. Um, if you want to read the data, as I mentioned, we provided this NEDC Pi stream as an um, example of some Python code that um, reads the data in a particular format. Um, Let me just say one more thing about the data itself. Uh, when we process the data, we actually compute differences between particular channels. So I've explained this in the 04 document. And what we do is we actually difference particular channels and produce an output channel that represents the difference between those two. This is called a montage. And these are what the neurologists actually use when they manually interpret the data. And they seem to be helpful in that it seemed they seem to accentuate seizure events. Uh, we find if we just process the channels directly, we get slightly worse performance than if we use these montages. So you might also want to look at um, how you pre-process the data before you actually apply it to your machine learning system. And all of that's described in this file, um, 04 underscore channels.txt. So questions, I'm sure you have lots of questions. <laughs> 